Hi folks, just a little bit of tinkering on the Vauxhall Vectra C today, Sharon's car. Gary put a new radio in it last week and uh, the steering wheel controls never worked with it. So I've had to go out and buy one of these little kits here and we've got to pull the radio out and also connect this in so that she can operate the steering column, volume and uh, channel changes. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so in this Vauxhall Vectra C, it's got a double DIN radio which uh, Gary fitted and uh, wired directly in, you need an extra wiring thing. And this is it here. For the Vauxhall Vectra C, it's a T1VX1. This is from T1 Audio. This is the kit you buy, I think it's about 24 pounds. And it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is pull the original radio out. And what you get is a, a main wiring loom to go into, this plugs into your existing car radio. Uh, socket from the wiring loom and then these then route into your existing wires from your radio itself you have this little component down here and this little audio t1 box here so this basically so that would go into there this little wiring loom here would then go into the other side of this little box and then you have uh, two options one is this multi-jack a uh, three and a half millimetre jack that plugs into your back of your radio's remote socket, which is what we've got on the Vauxhall. Or if you've got a non-standard radio, they give you another option where you've got three cables here to wire in. And it's all, it says all that in the instructions. But basically, this should now plug straight in. I've just assembled it together the way we need it. That will plug directly into the back of our radio, our new headset, for example, in the remote socket. This little box provides the adaption for using the stalk controls and then this basically goes in between your existing wire in here so let's pull the old radio out and let's fit this right this is the radio in question we haven't quite got the right surround for it so we had to uh, stick this on with some uh, double-sided tape so let's get that out of the way this is the radio headset in question there we go let's just pull it out of there and on the back here is the original loom here which I need to pull these two connectors out. Like that. That's the area which we haven't got to touch. And our new piece now will connect into this bit here. So that again just marries up with the original. And it's straightforward, you just push in like that. And now we've got these two sockets which click into our existing they should be color coded as you can see so there shouldn't be no worry about you getting them around the wrong way so that goes in that one this one's for the speakers again they're all color coded and they can only go in one way really it's a straightforward job this just make sure they're full pushed back home and then all we're left with is our little box with its little jack on you've got on the back of this radio it's a little remote socket down there and that says REM on it. And all we've got to do is plug our three and a half mil jack into there. And as I said, we don't need these extra free cables. That's if you've got a, a radio without a jack point in it. There's another sort of a set of wires that you can connect up. So we don't need that. So then we've got to just literally push all this back in. This is probably the most difficult part of the operation is getting all the cables in so that you don't bulk the radio system down and it don't stick out too far. So we'll just give me a bit of time and I'll sort this out. See, it's not fully going in. So bear with me, I'm just gonna get this in properly. Hello, baby. Hello. I'm just fitting your radio stalk control. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, you carry on doing what you're doing. You should have a little clear out. Right, well, I've got it back in. It's not 100% perfect, this surround. Well, whether or not it's supposed to be for this vector, I'm not too sure, but uh, I've got it on. I've had to use a bit of double-sided tape, but... Uh... Right, let's turn ignition on. And how do you turn it on now? Source. How do you turn this radio on? Oh, oh, that's not going on. Oh, isn't it good, isn't it? I must have pulled one of the connectors out. Always make sure it's working before you actually finish it. Put it in. I'm taking it out again now. Never mind. Okay, well, I've pulled it out again. This time I've read the instructions properly. And for the Alpine, this little wire here on the uh, remote cable there, as you can see, you have to chop the green cable. There's three loops there. There's a purple, an orange, and a green. You have to chop that. So I'm hoping 
But now I've connected that back up, put that back into there. And again, with all the hassle of trying to shove this lot back into here, which is what I'm going to do now, I'll, uh, well, in fact, now what I'm going to do first is actually turn it on. Because this is what I did before, and it, uh, I forgot to turn it on and check it. So, so let's just see if it powers up this time. It's not looking promising, is it? So that's not even worked. Don't you just love it when the plan doesn't come together? Right, well, after looking at the diagram, Brains of Britain Scrap It Man turned up, and because he's the one who fitted this radio for Sharon, and uh, he informs me that um, before he put this headset in, he needed to cross over a couple of cables. In other words, make it non-standard to fit, uh, because what happens? It won't power up on the standard wiring. Right, so what did you have to do? You show us what you've done here. You've got the red cable there and the yellow cable, right? And you reckon you had to cross the yellow over with the red. And that gives it a live and holds its memory for the radio station. Which it was doing. Yeah. Right, but me not knowing that, that he, that he had to do that, me plugging it in as normal, the unit didn't work, as I said to you. But we did have to cut that green cable. That looks like that's actually needed to be done anyway. So we just changed it over, put it back to standard as it would have been. No way I would have known this. Now he's taking all the credit for it because now it works fine. So just goes to show you, even if you've got the right part, even if you do read the instructions, sometimes it don't work because someone else has had a go at it. So there you go. It's now working. We're going to put it all back in now. It's working off the steering wheel. So the kit does work. But as the, the, the lesson here is, is that don't take for granted that, let's say you've got a new car, for example, and you put in the new radio, and as what I'm doing here, so to speak, someone else could have done something else beforehand. And even if you've bought the right part and installed it and it don't work, there probably could be another reason for it. Like in this case, he's come around straight away. And what have you said to me? Swap them two cables there. Swap them two cables there. Because he swapped them around initially, which I didn't know about. And now he's saying that he's the younger generation. Taking over. And he's taking over. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to put this all back in now. We've tested it while it's out. It works. It's now going back in. I'll see you in a minute. Right, it's all back in the best we can. And now he informs me that that front is for the Vauxhall Sephira. So I've been struggling to get it in. And he now tells me that that's the one off of the Sephira, so it was never going to go in flush anyway. But I've managed to get it in there anyway. So we turn the radio on now at the key. On it comes. Control on the steering wheel, races. Lowers the volume, which it's doing there. And then you've got the change the channel. I'm not going to turn the volume up. Well, a little bit. There we go. So I'm just changing it across there, all on the steering wheel, as you can see. So that's it. I can't, I can't actually play because of copyright, as you can see, but I'm sure you'll agree that it's working. And also that when we turned it off and turn it back on again, it's still holding the memory. Or when you've touched the number one there, for example, there's number one. We'd already pre-tuned it to radio two. So there you go. Job is now actually done. And lucky enough he come round because I wouldn't have known that. Have you seen my new key ring? Oh, look what he's got there. Look, look, look. Fold. Fold on the back and ST on the front. Unbelievable. Right, will you get in and start it up? And we'll see the uh, the exhaust noise coming from underneath. Let me lay on the floor. Go in. What? Can you hear that? You can see where it's been blowing out of this box there, and it's very, very thin there. And also that pipe further down, right down to the middle. We're going to get this changed. I've ordered it, so uh, I'm not going to put this on. It's just too much hassle out on gravel to do all that. So that's that. Oh, he's got, look, he's done the mirrors on these. So we've seen that in a video, no doubt, but uh, if you go to scrap it, I'll be doing mine very, very shortly, as you well know. And uh, what else you got to do to it, anything? Or what have you been buying? I'll give you a sneak preview uh, this time. Sorry. What's you been buying? I bought your drill bag. All oh, right, yeah. I ain't finished with it yet. I think you might need it. <laughs> No filming equipment. Oh, look what he's got here, look. Have you cleaned them? I'll give them a bit of go. Yeah, I can see these. That's a lot better than what it was. That's the um, 
the later version, as you can see, look, compare them to the old ones, he's got the older style on there, and as you can, well, as you can see there, look, they're, they're a lot prettier looking rear lights. And he's actually been buying a few spares as well. Spare airbag. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Again, he's, he's holding a few spares now. A couple of armour. Yep. New bonnet struts. Oh, he's got the bonnet struts. Oh, you'll be doing a video on that, no doubt, then, will you? Yeah, I'm going to do the video on the lights and the bonnet struts in a minute. Oh, right, so you'll see that on Scrap It Man's channel. Looking very nice. But, yeah, as you can see, look, he's been buying... He's been buying up some spares for the Mark III and uh, all, look at this, so all things that break but could be hard to find in the future. So just hand it to have this sort of stuff and uh, that's what he's been up to. I've got to finish off the Triumph Acclaim. That boot, as you can see, has um, been sprayed now. I've got to paint the, the flap there. That's got to be done. I've got to do this here. That's just got to be re-blacked in. I've got the trim to go around the windscreen to go on, so that's got to go in. And hopefully by the end of uh, this week, which you're seeing this video a lot further in advance. So hopefully this will be going for an MOT very, very shortly. And uh, then it will be up for sale. So we need a good clean of the valet down. But uh, I've also got to adjust the handbrake in it. I'll do that in a separate video. And uh, yeah, so a few little tinkering elderlings to finish off on there. And uh, that will be that sorted. So coming around to my Mondeo, the wheels now, as you can see, are now in a lovely silver the wheel centers have still got to be done so uh, jim is going to be doing them for me and i've got the folding mirror relay which i'm going to be modifying on mine so that's got to be done as well see my tires a bit flat look uh, yeah where they took the wheels off uh, the tires off the wheels they uh, didn't pump the tire up correctly so i've got to sort that one out so i'm going to get the pump out in a minute and just pump that up and there you go i've got them lights already fitted to mine so uh Happy days. Right, so I did a review on this little portable foot pump from, is it Adju? I can't remember. They sent me this. Yeah, Adju. And uh, I've used it quite a lot so far and it's never let me down yet. I've had the cheap ones in the past, as I've mentioned before, and um, after a while they sort of pack up. Well, literally very soon after you've used them a few times, they pack up, but uh, this seems to be going strong still. We'll soon find out. So the wire stored inside, that's got to go to the cigarette lighter, or the 12 volt supply as we now call them. And uh, yeah, as I say, this is a little bit flat, this tyre. So let's just plug that on there. It's in the off position at the moment, so I'll just put that on the wheel. Right, let's power it up. <clears throat> and I'm going to start the car up. Let's do that first. Right, I'll just leave it ticking over for a minute. Right, well, it's shown it's got 33 in here, but I think it requires 36. So let's turn it on. Still looks a bit flat to me, but uh, obviously the low profile tyres. So we've got 36.5 in there. Get that off. And I might as well check the others while I'm here. So I'm going to go around and do them. You ain't got to see that. I'll see you in a minute. Oh, baby, look. Just thought I'd tell you before you go out that I'm uh, going to fit these two genuine Ford suspension cover caps. Come here. To the, the, the ST220, baby. Well, where do they go, then? On the suspension, top of the suspension covers. Can you actually see it? Well, you will see it, baby. Can you just hold them for a minute? I'll just open the car up. Let's open the car up. Oh, they put R&L right and left on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, let's get this point. But I don't know what I'll walk around the car for, shall I? I don't need to. Uh... Right, let's go that way. And then that way. So if I lift this up here... Will they go on these things? Yes, baby. They're on the old strut. On the struts, baby. Well, you can fit it. Go on. That's a turn. That's a, that's a left. Right. Said that's left. That's, it's as you sit in the car, I think, shall Oh, what one's that? Left? So yeah, it's as you sit in the car. Or you could say near side. Well, we can't do the other one, shall I can't do all the jobs. I've got your hands on, baby. Oh, I can't do everything for it. Ah, look, 
she? What? She's only stuck her finger in the blinking paper clip, look. Come on, love. Oh, oh my God, what have you done there? Injury. I'll give you one job to do. Yeah, but that one was just a seal. This has been stapled. Well, I'm just saying, Shay, you've got to be extra careful, baby. I'm going to be taking these off, by the way, and I'm going to be powder coating them anyway, so just to let you know, folks. You've paid this, right, extra, yep. because it's genuine four, but why doesn't it say Ford on it? Well, it does. It says Ford there, Sharon, well, look. Why don't they put it on the top? Well, you don't want it on the top, do you? Why? It's a part, love. Clip it in. Shall? You have officially worked on the Mondeo and it's injured you. Injured you. Well done, baby. Oh my God. Never mind. Right, well, I've just told them, baby. Come here. Oh, hold on. Say Where there's claim, there's a blame. Where there's blame, there's a claim, for God's sake. So that injury there. Why? It's costed him a new exhaust. Oh, so you're going to make me, where there's claim, there's a blame. Where there's blame, there's a claim. Is that what where you're saying? Where there's blame, there's a claim, baby. So I'm going to pay for your exhaust, which is going to cost £135, by the way. Oh, it cost more than that an hour. Well, it's cost me that, not you. It's cost me that. <laughs> I'm injured for life. So you're, where are you going now, anyway? Just down the road, get a bit of shopping, and I'm right. going to pick a parcel up. Right, well, as I say, well, I'm going to pick your exhaust. I can't, won't be able to film that, folks, unfortunately. You know what they're like, they're funny like that. But we're going to get that done now. And uh, we'll come, when, we, when we finish, I'll just show you the underneath, show you it's been done. And uh, that way she won't uh, sue me. Correct. Coming in, off we go. I'd also like to say a big thanks to uh, Mark Webb. Mark saw in the last four uh, video that we done. I didn't have the little switch on the uh, four scan tester I've got like that. And he's actually had one laying about. He said I could have it. So thanks very much, Mark. That means that you can do the MS can and the HS can tests and all that. And uh, I, my one didn't have that. So thanks again, Mark. We're going to need it on his car because we're going to sort out his evap problem. Because uh, I did mention in my last video, uh, when I was doing a tinkering video, that um, my petrol cap hissed. And uh, I said that that was reminiscent of a vent being blocked and I bought a new cap. Well, I've since found out that, as I say, the evap system, which I knew nothing about, on older cars, like things like the Triumph for Claim, when you used to get a petrol cap hiss like that, it used to be that the vent had blocked and that, that can cause your tank to sort of suck in and also cause running issues as well. So uh, apparently new cars are different. They actually pressurise the system and although it is still vented via a charcoal canister, which is normally situated down by the back of the fuel tank, uh, the systems are pressurised because it re-sucks out, it sucks out the, the uh, fuel. What was that name of that valve? Anyway, there's some valve in there which we're gonna, we're gonna test out, but the EVAP system, it, it uses the fumes from the fuel tank and it actually puts them into the inlet manifold and burns them. When there's a leak in that system, it throws up different fork codes, like a massive leak or a small leak. A small leak's normally your, your cap around your, your, your fuel tank and the massive leak can be that the um, dump valve, or sorry, the charcoal vent, the vent by the charcoal hose is normally uh, stuck in the open position, so that would be classed as a massive leak. And then you've got one, what, what this valve is, I can't remember the name of it, where you can do a vacuum test on it, which we will be doing, and uh, this will bring up that fault code and then we'll be able to check it on that. So that's coming up in a later video. But as far as the hissing, it is a normal occurrence on modern cars, so I've been informed. I knew nothing about the, uh, the EVAP systems. I've now educated myself on it, and I understand that fully how they work now. So what I did say in a previous video about it being a hissy petrol cap normally is uh, 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 the vent stuck on. That, that basically relates to older cars without EVAP systems on. Anyway, we got to go down the road now. We'll see you a bit later on when we've had that exhaust done. So we'll come back to you shortly. It's turned into a tinkering video. Listen to this. Mongoose pipe. Mongoose pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, we've just taken the car down to be uh, have the rear box and the centre pipe changed. He let me have a look under it. The front pipe's gone as well, Sharon. Yeah. So what have I had to do? Well, I've oh. had... it all. Hey? New all exhaust. New all, top, all exhaust, top, the front pipe. The middle and the bottom. The, um, what's it called? The flexible coupler. And uh, we've just asked Gary to pick, well, I say we're walking our way home. Six mile journey from where we've uh, just left the shop in Horncastle. So we've just walked. Oh, my awful. Well, by the time we get to Gary, Gary just phoned us up. He's going to pick us up. We've just done three of the six miles. And uh, we've got to go and pick the car up later on, probably about half past three this afternoon. So uh, we, thought, we thought 
we'll go for it. We'll give it a long walk. So we've done. Sorry, baby. I'll carry the bags. So it's been three, three miles, isn't it? Yeah. Time we get to go, it'll be about three miles. So we'll show you when we've got the car back. We'll see you a little bit later. So we're just coming up to our last bit of our three mile walk, which approximately is halfway what we was going to do, but uh, we haven't done bad, Sharon, have we? Yeah. And we're all sweaty. Oh, it's And this little car parking area up here was the earliest part that Gary could have picked us up from. So, uh, oh, there he is. is he there, Shell? Yeah, that's life. We've stopped him filming a video, baby. Yeah, but uh, it's been a lovely walk. This is one of those uh, routes that used to be an old train track, a railway track, leading from Horncastle to Woodall Spa. He parked the furthest away, look. He's the furthest away, look, yeah. <laughs> well, what's another hundred yards, Sharon? Hey? Here he is down there, look. In the old ST. In the old ST220, yeah. Here you get, baby. Oh, it's great to see you, Gary. Is it cool in here, Sharon? Wants to be. Oh, it is. Do you want to take the shopping, baby? Oh. Yeah. Crap it, man. Saves the day again. Oh, eh? Saves the day again. Saves the day again? Yeah. So we just walked three miles. Yeah. What, were you, what were you doing? I was just about to do something on the car. Oh, right, okay. So we've stopped you then. Stop me in my tracks. Right, well, I'm glad to see the aircon works in here. Oh, right. Let's go back. We've got to drop his shopping off first to uh, his wife. Uh, and it was a heavy bag of shopping, shall wouldn't it? Right, off we go. Someone said, Sharon, on the last video that I've done, yeah. don't drive along with your hand on the blinking gear stick. You should know better than that. I blocked him. I'm not having that old toffee. No. I got it on my leg. I got it on my leg. <laughs> really? Oh, brilliant. Right, so we'll see you a little bit later, folks. Just showing you what this lovely weather we've been work, walking out in and it's nice to be in an air-conditioned ST220 with crap it man. 21 inside, isn't it? See you in a minute. Bye for now. Right. So it's the next day now. We ended up having to wait an extra half an hour, three quarters of an hour, because the lambda sensor was stuck in the first part of the downpipe and they had to get the blowtorch on it the uh, oxyacetylene to get it out. Lucky enough, they was able to save it, although the threads were really low on it. Oh, it's pouring down now today, baby. I just baby. wondering why we're outside. Well, just to let them know it's raining, Cher. Oh, and anyway, cut a long story short, the whole exhaust has been changed from like the manifold right the way through. So she's got a whole new system I bought for you, baby. I'm so happy. 200 odd quid, I wasn't going to get under. It was worth me finger injury. Going to work fingering injury? What are you talking fingering about? Fingering injury, you're Oh, right. Yes, look. I've got that wrong. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, folks. It is pouring down with rain. It's hold fire to any other jobs I was going to do today. Scrap it man's at home doing some fiddling about, shall he? Oh, he's always fiddling. Oh. He's what? He's always fiddling? <laughs> you mean lot of fiddle? No, yeah. anyway. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget, if you do like our channel, hit the subscribe button, ring that little notification bell, set your preferences to all. Just to say goodbye. Come on. And that way... You'll get notified every time we upload a video. Oh, when we're in hospital with pneumonia. Check out Butler's Empire, because we'll be cutting the grass on Butler's Empire when the rain stops. But apparently this is here for the weekend now, so we don't know when we're going to cut it. It might even get that long, shall It's about that it's long at the moment, isn't it? It's really long. Look at this. Look, I'll show you quickly. I'm going in. There we go. Look, there's the old grass there, and there's the new grass there. Still very, very long, look. Compared to the length of my finger, look. That's the new grass, look. Happy days. She's running, I'm going to run in now. See you later, folks. Bye for now.